I will say our son, I'm a professional butt wiper. I am great at butt wiping. <laughs> I, know the right, I know the right stroke. I know how to knock it out quick. A camera? Oh, he loves it. He turns on. That's great. That's great. He does his thing. I'm a little sweet pea. Everybody loves me. I don't need to cry no more. Ooh. Over hey. and, and over, over and, and over. over. That melody kind of fired up. Yeah, that's a you, hit. You, <laughs> ready, you ready to write to it? <laughs> hey, everybody. So good to see you. I am so pumped today to be talking all things dad life and all things fatherhood with some of our favorite country singers. We've got Brett Young, Jimmy Allen, and Dave Haywood from Lady A. Gentlemen, good to see you. Should we cheers? Are we doing the coffee? Oh, where's I didn't bring anything. Okay, we can fist bump. Dave, and then yeah. Dave, Jimmy's Dave got wanted... to... <laughs> Can I text my son to bring me a beer? Is that was it all limits? Yes. Well, it's one of the best parts of dad life, I, for sure. Let's let me break it down a little bit. So all dads here, the little kids. Dave, make sure I got this right. You've got a five-year-old son, two and a half-year-old daughter. Jimmy, six-year-old son, brand new daughter, just born in March, and Brett, also new dad with your daughter, just born back in October. Then I've got two girls myself that are eight and six. So. Uh, all, all, we got all girl dads here. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Um, I want to start off with this real quick. I, I've just had these moments where I, I say things that I never thought I would say as a dad. And, the, and the, just to break the ice, if you have one of those, my most recent was literally yesterday. We just were down here. We're in Florida. I was driving around. And I literally said, one more time, and I will pull this car over. Yeah. And I literally was like, <laughs> I am turning into my father. Do you guys have anything that sticks out? I've, I've been, uh, sometimes I find myself at the dinner table, the kids, uh, they do the weirdest thing with their food and they'll play with it, put their hand in their cup. This morning I had to say, Lily, please, we don't put our strawberries in between our toes. We don't put our <laughs> strawberries in between our toes. They just do the, I mean, it's like, I, I would have never thought I would say that, but here I am. Dude, I feel like I'm turning to my dad and my mom sometimes because my mom used to always do this thing where whatever you would ask her, tell her you wanted something, she'd flip that into what she wanted you to do. So the other day, uh, my son was like, Daddy, can I, I just need a new PlayStation game. I said, well, I tell you what, you can PlayStation your butt up to that room and yeah. clean it up. And it was, I was like, what am I saying right now? <laughs> Brad, uh, you is know, it too early for you? Yeah, it is. I think, you know, the, the baby talk is real. Um, but she doesn't understand much of it yet. So, um, you know, some of the isms that my parents had, I'm sure that they're going to come. I mean, I was I was manipulated into into playing sports in like a very uh, tricky way. I wasn't forced to do it, but it'd be like, cool, you can quit baseball, but uh, I was going to buy you that new bat. And then the next thing you know, I'm starting baseball season. So um, I'm sure those will come up when she's when she like ready to ask for a pony or something. But as of now, we're, we're just working on crawling. Yeah, it is funny, though. I, I always wanted to, when the, the kids were really little, I do the, the daddy, like the, the carrier on the front. Yeah. And the, the faces and the things that people would walk up and say, I just wanted to place like a camera hidden there. The baby faces <laughs> and the dumb things that people say to little, little, little babies. It's That's like, the one thing I've never done. And I refuse to do the daddy strap. I oh, said, the daddy strap. Okay, baby Bjorn, you don't do it. Or no, yeah. man. My fiance was like, why don't you do it? I said, I can't. I need a stroller or I'll just carry it. <laughs> yeah, I why don't I just hold them? I'll just hold them. Rapper. But it, and I get it. I see how Lexi can like cook with the baby wrap. You got both arms free. I just, nah, I started putting it on one time and I was just like, you know what? I don't think this is what God wants me to do with my life right now. <laughs> so I'm going to just let it go. <laughs> Dave, I feel like you've done it. I try. I couldn't figure it out. So there's about eight different straps that you have to kind of get on and get through. And then I put the baby in and the baby kind of started to fall out. So I, my, my, mine didn't quite work well. That was my dad fail. At least I was like trying to, trying to clip it in and yeah. you know, it was not, it was more of an injury device for me. One thing I'll never forget whenever I talk to people that are going to become new dads or whatever, I remember the moment that my wife told me that we were going to have a kid for the first time. I was actually on a work trip. She showed up and kind of just slipped the news in. And I was like, how could you tell me that? I've got to go and, you know, do stuff now. Like the, the whole world just kind of like crashed in in some way, in a good way, but in like, it was overwhelming. Do yeah. you, take me back to the moment you first found out you were going to be a, a dad for the very first time. So we were in Vegas for the Super Bowl having some cocktails. <laughs> uh, but we had been trying to have a baby. And we had just like, I think we had just sat down ha having like our first drink. So it was odd that my wife was like, I feel a little nauseous. And I reached over and I took the drink out of her hand and we walked to the CVS on Las Vegas Boulevard and bought a test and went up to the room. So I was there with her, but basically at the CVS, I bought two, uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, 
uh, Shalata, like the tall boy, uh, bloody beers. Okay. I bought, I bought two of them, yeah. and I was I was sitting on the bed, and she and she took the test, and she came out, and it was uh, before she took it. I said, either either we're each having one of these, or I'm having both of them. She came out, and it was it was positive, and so I had a couple beers to celebrate, and she was right. done drinking for nine months. Yeah, ours was, uh, I mean, you know, we were trying to, we did have one miscarriage, so it was such a blessing uh, when we found out we were pregnant with cash. But yeah, I mean, it was so haphazard. My wife was like, I walked into the bathroom, she's like, I'm pregnant. And I was like, I didn't know, you bought a test. You gotta like, I wanna know from the beginning. I didn't know what we were doing. I didn't know we were already, she just led with it. And like you said, I was like in the middle of like a tour, and so I'm leaving in a day or two, and I'm just like, you know, I felt like I needed to be kind of buttered up for the news, but it was, uh, man, it was beautiful. It was really beautiful. That, that moment, was, it hits you hard, man. It hits you hard. Yeah, it does. I was, I was broke when I had my son. I was working three jobs. I was a server, a janitor at an elementary school, and I was collecting trash for waste management. Oh, man. And I get a call. Every guy gets this text, and you always think the same thing. Hey, uh, we need to talk. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> like it's over. <laughs> yeah, I was like, what? All right, and she was like, you know, I found out I'm pregnant. I was like, Ugh. and then like, I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't excited at first. I was nervous, I was scared, and I was sick. I didn't leave the house for like two days. I just laid on the bed. It was like my sister was my roommate at the time, <laughs> and then like, <laughs> because I was thinking like, man, here I am. My dream of being an artist isn't quite happening yet. I have a son that I have to provide for. Uh, what am I going to do? But for me, the crazy thing is, was after I had my son, that next year, I got a publishing deal. The next year, I got a record deal. But I love that kid, man. He, uh, after two days, I was excited. I was ready. But the first two days, I was freaking out. Having a kid definitely makes it, it forces you to grow up, right? Like yeah. whether or not whether or not you're ready, you might feel like you're a man before, but like now you are grown. <laughs> when, when does when does that start happening? Because I'm still you waiting. You don't feel it yet? No. I, don't, I, don't, I never I qualified. I always looked at like dads as such these wise, you know, and I'm like, I just don't feel qualified. You know, like I feel so underqualified to like yeah. be in this role. You know, like it'll kick. I feel like it'll kick in when you don't realize it. And then it'll hit you. You'll look back at kind of the the dad and the mentality you had when you first had a baby versus when the kid is five. Then you're like, you've been dadding this whole time and didn't realize you've actually turned into a quality father. I remember um, sort of on that note, my dad telling me like, you'll never feel ready, which is true. And another person that I used to work with was kind of a mentor because I was always worried about, oh man, it's going to shut life down. I'm not going to have a social life anymore. I'm just going to be, and he, and, and he said, what's going to be crazy for you is that all of a sudden you turn around and it's like, you don't want to leave. It's not yeah, that you feel like you're missing out on the world. It's like when you leave, you feel like you're missing out on the world. Yeah. Have you guys um, had any of those feelings? I know a lot you're touring and, then, and a lot of you, you have songs or you have experiences now where, and you've talked about leaving and, and what that feels like or taking them with you and all that. I do. I know. I love being home. I'm curious what you think too, Brett, because it's so new for you with a almost one year old, I guess. But right. I, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, I just love being home with them. I do. You know, the quarantine's been a lot because you're with them all day long. <laughs> but it's uh, you know you run out of movies on on Disney Plus real quick, but uh, it, it's I do I love I mean getting to have that much time with them and I, I you do you feel like you're missing out on all kinds of stuff happening but that's just where I, my heart is and that's where I want to be and yeah. I do love I mean touring I'm missing it so much right now I'm missing being out there but um, yeah we had a song called What I'm Leaving For about you know gosh why we're out there doing it and it's really for our kids and for our families and letting them know how much we love them. So it's, uh, that's where, it's where my heart, that your heart just shifts, your heart shifts. Yeah. And Brett, I know yeah, you have a song that's, uh, that's, that's also kind of along the same notes, just, you know, to your family and, and what they mean to you. Yeah, you know, I wrote that before, before the baby was born. My wife was about five months pregnant when we wrote Lady. And, um, and it was kind of, it was kind of, it kind of actually came from that place that, that Jimmy was talking about, that he had experienced two days of, I experienced the full nine months of that, um, where it was like, <laughs> you know, kind of freaking out about not just not knowing how to parent a child, but, but especially not how, knowing how to parent a little girl. Um, I, you know, my, my mom had a, a, a daughter in her first marriage 
Um, and But she was eight years older than me and she moved out when I was eight. So I kind of had a girl in the house for like a minute, but, but really I just felt uh, really vulnerable about that process. And, and so the, the realization that I had when we, when we actually sat down to write that song uh, was uh, that my wife has got this, you know? And so it was like this like kind of wave of relief came over me that, um, you know, not just has my wife been around babies and, and, and nanny the, all the way from infants up to teenagers in her life, but also she's a successful, intelligent, strong woman. It really seems like it's a song uh, about my daughter, but it's really a song to my daughter about my wife and the realization that like, even if I'm getting everything wrong, I got this woman that'll like kind of grab me by the ear and be like, nope, not like that. You know, so, uh, so uh, yeah, and, 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 and just to echo Dave's point too, um, I was terrified of missing things being on the road. And so there's to, at the risk of sounding cliche, because I think we're all saying some version of this. It is really nice to be home with family, but um, selfishly as not just a, an artist, but as a man, I feel kind of worthless, you know, sitting around. Yeah. Well, and Brett, touring with Thomas Rhett, he, he knows a couple of things about being a dad. Any advice from him? Yeah, but, you know, I think the, the best way to learn from Thomas is, is just because, and it was like this when we were out with Lady A as well, like the kids are out there quite a bit, you know, and so like, it was a lot of watch and learn, you know, uh, for the most part, when his, when his kids were there, they were off doing their own thing, but there were moments where they were running around the arena and stuff before the show, or also, I'll never forget this one time, I think we were in, I think we were in Dallas um, on the Lady A tour, and, and I walked out of my bus, and Dave had blown up a pool behind their bus, and he's in the, he's in the pool with his <laughs> nice. kids. It's like, I think it was, I think it's been mostly this way with, with all country artists. It's been less ask questions and more just like take advantage of the opportunity to be around it and watch, you know, how they make it work when they're gone a lot, but then also how kind of unnatural it is to try to have a family on the road when your schedule is so strange. And, right. and so I didn't really pick a lot of brands. I just kind of watched as much as I could. Yeah. yeah. Cause I, I know before quarantine, um the time that I got to spend the most with my son was actually on the road so like during the summer I would take him out with me and like I remember we was on the Kane Brown tour uh and Aiden like he loved it he loved running around the arena we would grab like wheelchairs and stuff and push each other around the arena and like every city we would go to since I literally had nothing to do from the time I woke up to about 7 p.m every city we would find like a museum uh, we go bowling, we go eating. So I actually got to spend more time with him on the road than at home. Cause you know, when you're home, whether he's in school or from your home, you know, you always got a meeting about something while you're here. You got a meeting and you got a writing session. So I, I know for me, it's been, it was great, you know, touring, having him, having him with me. Quarantine's been, you know, like you said, it's been awesome, but I believe there is a thing that's too much family time. Okay. Uh, it is balance. Well, absence makes the heart grow fonder, that whole thing, right? Balance yeah. is important. And I take my hat off to every stay at home parent out there. I tell people it's a lot easier to work a 90 hour a week job than it is to be a full time parent. Yeah. So I, I take my hat yeah. off to every. Yeah. I, had a, I had a full year at home, like daddy daycare, and it was one of the most challenging yeah. things I've ever done. It was like, let me get back to work so I can get away from this real world. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, expert dad, what are some things or maybe one thing that you're now an expert at that you never thought you would be? For example, I, I am a pro right now at detangling girls' hair. I can, I got a little spray, uh, uh, we got a special brush, I can do it without ripping out the scalp. It's crazy. I never I knew, I, I, and I, I'm good now. I'm real good. They come to me. Yeah, I need tips on that because we have a daughter, our, our daughter, daughter Lily is two and a half, and it's all princess. It's all every dress and she dresses up in Elsa and Frozen and uh, Belle and everything but I can't the hair is tough for me I can't figure out a good the good ponytail I can't figure out how to get all the hair and it's all like coming out I just can't I need I'm, I'm still learning in that our son I will say our son I'm a professional butt wiper I am great at butt wiping <laughs> I, know the, I know the right stroke I know how to knock it out quick I know how to do it in a public gas station quick with being safe with a mask on <laughs> I can do it. I can do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, never thought I'd say that. I never thought I would say that. that was, yeah. I've gotten great at convincing kids to do what they don't want to do and make it fun. Like turn everything into a game. That's what I've, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I've become a parental con artist. Okay. <laughs> uh, and that's what parents are like anything like, 
I, to get him to clean his room, I said, bro, let's make it to a game. So what I do is I put the hamper. He's got this little, this little basketball little basketball thing. You put the hamper under it. You shoot the clothes through the hoop and it goes into the hamster. Then you do the same thing with the trash can. We'd be in the corner, Kobe! <laughs> I was like, and he's so competitive. I was like, bro, I bet you I can make my half of the bed before you make your half. He's like, no, you can't, daddy. No, you can't. I was like, yes, I can. Ready? Go. And next thing you know, he makes the whole bed himself. <laughs> <laughs> That'll work for a while. He's going to get smart. <laughs> oh, it's epic. How about you, Brad? Anything? I have, like, the, the, the trick to get her to stop crying, and it's, it's pretty silly, but, like, she loves music. She's obsessed with music. But, like, I'm not going to walk around my house singing my songs to my daughter. I just would feel really weird about that. <laughs> so, so, I, so I make up songs all day, every day, and there's, like, three songs that I made up from scratch that, like, are the only three that work. So since I know that they work, she can That's be a one. one. I want to hear one. Give me like your when she's crying. Um, uh, her name's Presley. We call her Sweet Pea. And so it's, I'm a little sweet pea. Everybody loves me. I don't need to cry no more. Ooh. Over, hey. and and over, over and over and over. over. And, over. Um, <laughs> and that, that melody kind of fire though. Yeah, that's a <laughs> you, ready, you ready to write to it? Uh, <laughs> we should write kid songs, dude. Oh, dude, I'm already working on it. But I, I got three already I just told you about. I've no got a good one you guys can steal. When I, I used to, when I used to rock them, I used to do one that's a little more upbeat. It's like, you want to dance with daddy? Dance with daddy. Dance with daddy. Dance with daddy. That's it. That's the whole thing. That would over be great. Over. You want to dance The crazy thing is, uh, man, yeah. <laughs> I always, I kind of figured Dave and Brett, your kids would like music because you don't really realize it, but I noticed the whole time my fiance was pregnant, she was at my concerts. You know what I mean? So she hears those songs and hears those songs. And, I, again, like you said, I would never sing my own song because I just think that's weird. Yeah. But there's been times when she was crying, I would turn on a live version of a song of mine that she might have heard. And it's crazy how it calms her down. Because you figure the whole time she was in the womb, she side stayed at, at a concert getting pounded by a speaker right behind her head. Yeah. You know, yeah. but it, it's, yeah, that, that music <laughs> definitely, especially like that's all they heard in the womb every Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Yep. since she was conceived by the stork. <laughs> we are, and and, uh, and Jimmy and, and Dave, since you have little older kids, are, are you seeing that your um, kids are kind of musically inclined or are you kind of influencing them that way? Like, hey, here's a guitar, here's a dr Dave, I think you just bought a drum set, right? I did, I got a drum set. Oh, for no. Yeah, we have, a basement. <laughs> we have a basement where I can shut the door and it's covered with concrete. So it, it can be go. totally, you know, isolated down there. But um, I'm embarrassed to say, I hope he won't watch this, but he, he can't carry a tune yet. And I'm a little concerned. <laughs> Whenever we kind of, sometimes I'll be like, ah, ah, like, does it, do you understand it goes up? And I don't know if he gets it. That's okay. Uh, but uh, he's got the beat down. He's got the rhythm. He's got the groove. Uh, he loves, you know, faking around with guitar when we're watching like music videos on TV and stuff like that. So he's got the spirit. I don't know if the pitch is going to be there. <laughs> but, uh, His heart's in the right place. His heart's in the right place. <laughs> Jimmy, how about yeah. your old one? Yeah, Aiden, Aiden is, he, he is, I don't know if he'll be into music. Like, he likes it, but he doesn't want to play guitar. He doesn't want to play drums because he said he doesn't want to mess his fingers up. But <laughs> he loves soccer and he can dance. And he's, he's a character. Like, he's into, like, Theater. So, like, I got into, I did musical theater all through high school, through college, and I'm um, actually going to start getting back into it here pretty soon. And I think he might take that route because he doesn't really like being on stage because I tried to bring him on stage before, and he, like, freaked out. And then one time at a recent show, he was, like, trying to crawl up to where my drummer was because we got these scrims that go up to, like, this walkway. So he was up there and just thought he was just talking to Seth. He looked out. He was actually on stage and he freaked out. But anytime a camera turns on, a camera, oh, he loves it. He turns on. That's great. That's great. He does his thing. But I singing it. like on stage where there's actual people, no. So I can see him being a, he might grow out of it, but I can see him being an actor before yeah. the musician. Next subject, uh, having a baby, having a kid changes the sex life let's just be real it does uh we all have to implement new things maybe to create some privacy <laughs> some private time as the kids get older you got to get real creative we do the netflix 
turn on a show, lock the door. <laughs> and then even if your kid's really small, then it's just a matter of like finding the time. Have you implemented any strategy that you could share? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Go ahead. Come on, Jimmy. Yeah. What? Teach us. <laughs> Jim, Jimmy Allen, let's do this. Let's call. Hey, all right. <laughs> the trick. What you do is you say, you know what? Uh, you act serious, like, all right, we need to go talk real quick. You say, all right, we're going to go talk. Then you go somewhere else and you talk for a second, whether it's the bathroom or the laundry room or the bedroom. Oh, you're telling the kids, yeah. like, it's a serious moment. Hey, yeah. Mom, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. That's how you do it. All right. That's, there's other things to do, too, but that's but, but the that's yeah. most effective. Because when kids see you see you're serious, they're like, oh, yeah, I don't have nothing to do with that. Yeah. They're all going to talk. It's like, it's like telling them candy is medicine so they don't want it anymore. <laughs> There you go. We've, Dave, we've, you got anything? We've got two kids. I've only had sex twice, Jimmy. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have good locks on our door. We have good locks on our door. Oh, okay. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> real quick before we, we'll just, we'll maybe a couple more here and we'll wrap up. But I, I Brett, you ain't tell us what you do, Brett. <laughs> She's not old enough to need a trick yet. <laughs> yeah, you guys are good she to go. Oh, oh, she takes a two. She takes a two-hour nap. I don't need two hours. Walks around naked all day long. All you need is a good. Listen, I tell you about. All you need is a good four and a half minutes. That's it. <laughs> Brett, uh, Brett, I'll lend you. I'll lend you that baby pool from the road. You can have it for whatever you want to do with it. All right. I, I bought one because I saw that. I have one now. <laughs> oh my god, so good. Number one lesson so far that you've learned from your kids as a dad. Dave, what you got? Ooh, man. Uh, the, the beauty in the small things, I think. Uh, you know, I mean, sorry to change it super serious, but I mean, we went on a little nature walk yesterday. We're here in Florida. We came down to the beach. And uh, I mean, there's little things that I think I w I'd walk right past a little, little tiny flower. And both of my kids would stop talk about it it's so so cute it's so pretty can we pull it and then they would just they'd spend five minutes around a flower this big then it just kind of i don't know that it kind of shows you there's a different perspective and to kind of stop and take some time to to focus on you know the small little things in front of you that, that you know god's mm -hmm. beauty right there in front of you and things i would have glossed right over so i think that those when i when they stumble upon something really small that i would have just overlooked it's almost the Christmas morning kind of philosophy. Like they just want a box to play with, you know, like they need, they just need something simple. Uh, and, and it's beautiful. So there's beauty in those small things. Yeah. Brett, what do you think? Anything yeah, so think, far? I, yeah, I think it's, it would, it would be, it would be the same thing as Dave's. I would have, uh, I was going to say like reminding myself to see the world and experience it again as she is through her eyes, but it really comes down to the same thing is there's, there's innocent, innocence and excitement in everything that they experience because you know it's all new to them but the fact of the matter is it's not any less beautiful than it was the first time we experienced it we just get a little jaded and so uh, again because my daughter's younger that's really as much as other than the fact that she's always happy and smiling unless she's ready for a nap and i you know we do kind of take our uh, how blessed we are for granted too but i think it's that kind of like beautiful innocence that, that yeah. we kind of have lost as we've gotten older how about you jimmy yeah, yeah i i think i the one thing i learned was um just how much my parents love me, you know, just seeing how uh, the things I do for my son and the things you're willing to do. Then I look back and think about everything my parents did for me. And like they said, uh, just the simple things. Like I, I remember we went to uh, Jake, Jake Owen's house or whatever, not too long ago. And he's got all this yard. So my son was like, I want to take my truck over there. So we take his power wheel trucks, we take fishing poles. We take all these toys over there, right? We get there. Jake's buddies there with his two sons. We're ready to fish. We got all this stuff. Next thing we look over, and the boys are just at the pond, just chasing little frogs. Just <laughs> chasing frogs. And, like, they literally <laughs> did that for, like, 40 minutes. Then I said, let's get – y'all want to go play on the power wheel? So instead of driving it around, they decided to push it for a little bit. And then they want to go to the creek and just look at fish. So it was like, it, it taught me to simplify my life sometimes, man. Mm -hmm. You know, you can, you can clutter your life with a bunch of nonsense that you don't need for the fulfillment you're seeking. You know what I mean? A lot of times the fulfillment that you're seeking is right in front of you. You know, if we learn to remove some of the nonsense, some of the distractions, stuff like that. <laughs>
Last thing, uh, as you know, moving forward as dads, I feel like as the kids grow up, it gets more and more important to talk about the, the tough things that are happening, especially things that are happening like right now in our world. What are you hoping that you are communicating to your kids right now? What are you trying to communicate to them and kind of talk to them through tough issues that are going on? Dave, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, you know, my son's five. Uh, we had just, you know, just gotten this book re recently about God's, it's called God's Very Good Idea. And it's just about all different types of skin color, all different types of people, and everyone's uh, how equal they are and how beautiful they are in his eyes and in our eyes. And so just sharing and walking through that, even just in a kid's book format, even speaks to me. And just, uh, just to have those kind of moments once a day, however often, to kind of walk through that. Um, you know, and he's five, so he's often on off to the next thing. It's like trying to talk about heavy things with your kid. But if you can have those moments where you're showing him, I think by example, leading with example too, uh, uh, and, and just sharing love, sharing love with them. Yeah. Jimmy, how about you? I, um, it's so funny. Like, so when this, uh, the whole thing started, uh, with the George Floyd thing, I was trying to have a talk with my son and just explain to him, listen, it's our job to love everyone, no matter how people might treat us. And I wanted to tell him, say, hey, Aiden, there might be a time in your life where somebody might look at you different because your skin color is different. He's like, what do you mean? I said, well, Aiden, you know, you know, you're black. He said, no, I'm brown. I was like, ah. all right. I said, well, you know, your dad's black and, you know, your mom's white. So you're mixed. But no, I'm not, dad. Half my face isn't black. The other half isn't white. <laughs> and in the midst of me trying to teach him, I quickly learn the innocence of a child and you learn that if we teach them love and acceptance for everyone at a young age, that's what they learn because no one is born yeah. with, with hate in their heart. And, and so that's what I just been teaching them just to, you know, love everyone. And, and the thing about kids, a lot of times they'll gradually do that themselves. You know, when they see other kids playing, they're just going to play whether no matter what they look like or where they're from. So a lot of times, it's pretty easy, um, honestly, I, I think as a parent to just keep encouraging them to play with everyone, you know, and kind of just let them keep doing it. And yeah, because, you know, kids just want to play, you know, they don't, they don't see that. I don't know if you saw this thing. I, I shared this thing on Instagram where this white guy was asking his son, it was a picture of a black boy, white boy and different pictures and stuff and said, hey, what do you notice about these boys? Uh, he was, and the son was picking out everything in the picture except for the fact that one was black and one was white. So after they picked off the ones, they're hugging in one picture and high fiving in one. So what else do you notice? Oh, this picture's got tall grass in it. He's like, "That's all you notice about the, the in the picture?" He's like, "Yeah." I was like, "That's cool, man." Wow, yeah. that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah. Brett, do you have any thoughts on that? Just kind of how you, what you want to sort of teach as you move forward. Yeah, I think it's less about, for me, again, a lot of these answers are because uh, Presley's right. so young right now and she's our first. But I think for me, what I'm realizing, uh, it's more about the goals that I'm setting. And it's less about what exactly, um, and you know, you know, because you think about like we're, we're right now, we're living through something that like generations will skip stuff this heavy and, and, and moments in time that are this heavy. Like there will be, there have been generations that like, and it's not because it's not going on, but it's, it's, big, it's come to the forefront and it's, in, it's, it's right in front of our eyes right now. And uh, I think what my goal for her is, you know, topically there's going to be things that come up and we're going to have to address those, but it's more about how she's taught. And I think right now, because we can't tell her, you know, do this and don't do this and be that it's more about realizing that everything we do, she's watching and she's learning already. And so I think my parents were such good examples of, of teaching by action. It's, you know, it's, it's not what you say, it's what you do. And I think, yeah. it, you know, I think as much as I'm watching her just watch me and my wife all the time, I'm realizing that you can't just say, hey, this is how you, this is how you be a good girl. And this is how you become a good person. It's like, yeah, because then you turned around and you showed her something else. You yeah. can't do that. And so I think we're setting goals for ourselves to just always live uh, like the people that we want her to turn into. Final thing, Father's Day plans. How would you dream to spend it if you had your wish? We'll send this tape to the people in your lives to make sure it happens. Let's start with you, Brett. I, I just want to golf. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they can come or they can not. It doesn't – I'm, I'm going to shoot right around 100 whether they're in the cart or not. It won't – but, uh, but I, just, I just want four hours on the golf course. And all right. <laughs> I just want I just want to be in that baby pool just soaking up the sun. 
you know, I mean, I, I kind of want my cake and eat it too. I'd love to have great family time. Uh, and I'd love to have like, you know, a couple other dads, like I don't play golf a lot. So when I do, it's like twice a year and it's always like a super special trip. So I'd love to like get out with a couple other dads. Maybe I'll text you up, Brett, but maybe we can go, you know, a little golf, just something to kind of get outside and then to be with the kids the rest of the day and close it out with a little bourbon and a cigar. Be nice. There you go. Jimmy, how about you? Man, I am actually, I got my father's, got my father's day wish. Uh, I am a huge fisherman. I fish all the time. So the day before Father's Day and the day afterwards is my time that me and my kids are going to celebrate Father's Day. On Father's Day, I'm fishing from, no lie, 1 a.m. <laughs> until 1 a.m. the next day. So we're going to go out deep, deep sea fishing. We're going up to Delaware. Come back wow. to Delaware. We're going we're gonna to go about 50 miles out, go tuna fish for a while, come wow. in shore, try to fish for like flounder and trout. So I'm fishing for 24 hours. No <laughs> sleep, just coffee, beer, what? water, and Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Good country song. Write that song. Yeah, let's write that one. <laughs> hey guys, thank you so much. Cheers to all of you. Uh, Cheers uh, to dads. Happy cheers, Father's man. Day. Happy Father's Day. Thank you all, man. Some time today. I love you guys. That was enjoyable. Thanks. Love you back.